You're listening to Around New York on WNYC-FM. I'm Fred Child, and we're joined today by the composer William Mayer, who celebrated his 70th birthday just about three weeks ago. Among his works, you might recall his 1983 opera, A Death in the Family, that was heard nationally on NPR. You might remember his musical Global Journey, Hello World. It's been performed hundreds of times, and there's a recording of it, in fact, with Eleanor Roosevelt acting as the narrator. His works include orchestral, choral, theater, chamber, solo, and children's pieces. His music is often described as lyrical and witty or sometimes even fanciful. His contributions to the world of music aren't aren't limited to just his music writing as well. He's a fine writer about music. He's active at CRI, uh, Composers Recording Inc., where he was chairman of the board. And uh, if you're beginning to get the idea that he's leading a busy and active life, it's true. William Mayer, our guest on today's edition of Around New York, along with his son, Stephen Mayer, pianist Stephen Mayer, and pianist Shahan Arzruni, who will be performing for us in just a moment. William Mayer, welcome to Around New York. Wonderful to have you here. Thank you. Now, uh, there's there's actually lots I want to ask you about over the course of today's program, but just briefly before Shahan plays some of your music, I understand that you went to Yale in the 1940s with the idea of... Uh, of being a writer, not not of music, but of words. How did that change along the line? Uh, well, actually, my stint at Yale was interrupted by being in the Army and being in the Counterintelligence Corps. I felt extremely important. I uh, went to Japan, was taught Japanese. Uh, I'm not sure whether uh, th- that journey had anything to do with my change from words to music. Uh, in a sense, I don't think I really have changed because uh, so many of my works are vocal. So it's a little bit like having your cake and, and, and eating it. Uh, my um, uh, mother, as a matter of fact, was a, uh, a writer. Uh, and uh, she had a work published uh, by Houghton Mifflin, which is interesting because my daughter is also a writer. And she's also had a work published by Houghton Mifflin. <laughs> And as you mentioned, my son is a, a fine pianist, so uh, the, the, uh, the, the tradition of words and, and music uh, continues. So a musical and artistic family, the, yes. the mayors. I should mention another daughter who's also a journalist, uh, Cynthia. Well, it sounds like you're a, a, a proud father in addition to everything else that you've done over the course of your career. I am. <laughs> William Mayer is our guest on today's edition of Around New York. And uh, before we go any farther, let's hear some of his music. This is from a set of pieces called Subway in the Sunlight and Other Memories. Uh, We'll hear three bird-related pieces, Feeding Pigeons, The Rude Bird, and Bird Cage, Shahan Arzruni, joining us uh, at the piano. And and William Mayer, anything we should know about these pieces before we hear them? Well, the first selection is dedicated to my son, Stephen, uh, and the entire suite uh, is dedicated to uh, Shahan. So that we have the right people here in the studio. We do indeed. Three excerpts from Subway in the Sunlight, performed by Shahan Arzruni, to whom these pieces are dedicated. Music written by William Mayer, live performance on Around New York. Thank you. 
A set of pieces by William Mayer, and the, the rude bird just wouldn't go away. It came back again at the end. We heard Feeding Pigeons, The Rude Bird, Birdcage, and then a little bit more of The Rude Bird. Shahan Arzruni performing from a set of pieces called Subway in the Sunlight and Other Memories. Music by William Mayer, who is our guest on today's edition of Around New York, just turned 70 a few weeks ago. And in fact, his 70th birthday will be celebrated uh, a week uh, from Thursday. It's on the 14th, Thursday the 14th, at Weill Hall at Carnegie, as uh, Greenwich House Arts honors William Mayer on the occasion of his 70th birthday. For more information about that, you can call Carnegie Charge at 212 247-7800. Robert Sherman will be hosting that, and uh, lots of folks taking part in that. We'll talk a little bit about that over the course of today's program as well. Actually, it's it's next Thursday. Yes, Thursday the 14th. Did I I, I say that right? Yeah, Thursday the 14th. Okay. Uh, Thursday the 14th at Weill Recital Hall. Uh, William Mayer, honored on the occasion of his 70th birthday. And William Mayer, um, you, your your music encompasses uh, a huge variety of, of styles and pieces and a, a huge body of work, but several of your most successful pieces have actually been written for children in one way or another. Uh, the, the pieces that we just yes, heard, uh, the, right, uh, Hello yes. World that I mentioned, yes. uh, The Greatest Sound Around, uh, an opera about uh, some several animals competing to, to, oh, yes, to the figure greatest out sound who, around. Who, yes. which animal makes the best sound. <laughs> and the, the, it's one of my favorite, uh, not my favorite pieces, but my, one of my son's favorite pieces <laughs> of mine, which is always an embarrassment. Now, <laughs> Stephen, is that still one of your favorite pieces, or was this one of your favorites when you were growing up? No, it still is. It In still fact, is. Every year I think it's better than it thought it was the year before. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, well, you really have to hear it. I'm not kidding. It's just great. It's, uh, it's, it's funny. It's tender. It's uh, original. Uh, it's just a total winner. And why it isn't more, I mean, it should really be uh, more famous than Sesame Street. Well, that's uh, one of the, William Mayer, one of the many pieces that you've written for either the education yes. or edification yes, or yes. entertainment of children. There's a long history in, in Western music of writing music for kids. Yes, uh, yes. From, I mean, many of the, the greatest composers. But on the other hand, sometimes people say, well, if you're writing for kids, it's because maybe you're not up to writing for adults. See, uh, <laughs> I hope that's not true. Uh, I mean, how, do, how do you approach <clears throat> writing music for uh, young listeners? Well, I think the, the secret is it's, it's an awful lot of fun to write uh, for children, but I, I just write the pieces. Uh, uh, possibly, maybe I've never grown up myself, so I, I, I suspect maybe <laughs> I'm writing them for, for myself. Uh, uh, a lot of my composi- compositions date from a period in which uh, uh, the prevailing um, uh, style or trend was very, gr- very grim. Uh, and if, if uh, one did something that was immediately access- accessible or uh, um, what have you, uh, tonal, uh, it was considered, uh, you know, uh, possibly second rate. So that when you write, write for children and so forth, I had an excuse to be v- very direct. Now, the wonderful thing is times have changed and one can write uh, uh, lyrical or uh, accessible music uh, and hopefully fresh and it's accepted of course uh, and it depends on the piece not the style these days right so. well one of your works that has gotten several performances is your 1983 opera that was based on uh, James Agee's yes, novel which of course Death is in the Family anything but a children's work yeah, I was right. very fortunate to have had uh, Dawn Upshaw uh, uh, as the uh, uh, lead the opera theater St. Louis and uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the, uh, one of the large parts uh, was done by uh, tenor Peter Cazares, who will be uh, singing uh, uh, an excerpt uh, this uh, coming Thursday uh, at the concert with uh, uh, my son Stephen Mayer accompanying him. But the, um, uh, 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 that work, I'd love to have it done, of course, in the East. It's been done in Minnesota, Opera Theater of St. Louis, and uh, American Opera Projects, actually, are uh, uh, planning to do a, a concert performance at uh, Trinity Church later this year. Uh, how did that project originally come about? Was it, was it your idea to adapt his novel for... Uh, for the yes, opera well, stage? There, there is a very successful um, uh, play adopt, uh, adaptation by Tad Moselle, which people uh, know, called All the Way Home. But I felt there was such tremendous poetry in, in the book itself, A Death in the Family. Uh, and I was drawn to it because it celebrates the, uh, the problems and, and uh, 
uh, the, the, the conflicts that uh, little people have in this world. And, and as you know, so many operas are written about uh, kings and important people, and particularly these days, you know, so many operas are written about celebrities, whether it's Marilyn Monroe or Einstein. And uh, I've, al I've always felt that uh, the, the ordinary people have been somewhat shortchanged in terms of the drama of their lives facing all the big questions, uh, such as uh, 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 relationships that work and then don't work, and, and mortality. So it, 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 it uh, interested me very much. And <laughs> well, it did get performed in 83 in, in, uh, in St. Paul, and then 86 in St. It, Louis. It, and and it, then it's been on national public radio four times. Right. Uh, and excerpts have been done around. But, of course, I would love to get a New York performance, and, and there has been some interest along the way, but we'll get a concert performance uh, in, uh, in March. And, and it was, I mean, it was well written about it at the, at the time. In fact, uh, the National Institute for Music Theater gave it an award in, in 1983. Yes, I and it was an award from uh, Beverly Sills and uh, uh, Harold Prince for that. And uh, it was uh, delightful. <laughs> and yeah. and Robert Jacobson, writing in, in opera, the late Robert Jacobson, yes. writing in Opera News, uh, wrote that uh, he th he thought it was just terrific and really worthy of, of a lot more performances. So right. hopefully those are still to come. From uh, uh, for Death in the Family, the 1983 opera w written by William Mayer, who is our guest on today's edition of Around New York. Now, in addition to your uh, composition, you've done a lot of other things, including I understand you had a hand in. Uh, in the meeting that Aaron Copeland and Aram Kachaturian had, how did what, what role did you play in, in bringing that about? Oh uh, well, it was the first time I was a moderator. The first time that uh, Copeland met uh, Kachaturian, I, I remember. And I had about uh, a, a hundred questions, and I think I was a, a little bit on the rigid side. And uh, after the interview was over, uh, Aaron Copeland said, "This was probably your first time, wasn't it?" <laughs> <I don't laughs> so, know. was this was this live? Was this it live was on stage? Uh, or no, no, no. This this was uh, in the uh, apartment. I'm just trying to think. An apartment of Fifty Seventh Street. Uh, and I remember Aaron Copeland, as you remember, a very tall, beaky, spare person, uh, 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 almost twice as uh, uh, tall as uh, uh, Kachaturian. I, I'm now pronouncing it correctly because my guest, Shahan Azruni, <laughs> will know how to put Kachaturian. Is that right, Shahan? <laughs> Kachaturian. Uh, okay, I, we get the correct <laughs> Armenian pronunciation. I, I'm sure okay. you're not having <laughs> planned to have a, a class in the pronunciation <laughs> of Armenian <laughs> during uh, around New York. So. Well, whenever <laughs> Shahan is here, we'll be sure to do it right. <laughs> but what was interesting interesting I remember was I was in the middle of the couch and uh, Mr. Kachaturian, <laughs> at any rate, uh, was a bit uh, more solid and, and massive than, than Mr. Copeland. And so there was a perfect balance. The, 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 the couch did not go to the right or the left and, and so forth. But, uh, but uh, at any rate, they, they had a wonderful conversation. And uh, 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 seriously, uh, uh, Kachaturian was here for uh, uh, a number of works, including a, a wonderful uh, uh, a cello concerto that he did, well, that uh, Rostropovich uh, uh, performed. So I did uh, a fair amount of writing and also had one piece that uh, created quite a lot of controversy in the New York Times called Live Composers, Dead Audiences. And uh, a lot of the live audience wrote uh, <laughs> with annoyance. <laughs> when was that? Oh, that was, that was in the late 70s. Oh, well, that's a topic that's still being talked about. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> William Mayer, composer, uh, writer, moderator, and much more. William Mayer, our guest on today's edition of Around New York, along with his son, the fine pianist Stephen Mayer, and Shahan Arzruni, who's performing some of William Mayer's music for us today. And uh, let's hear some music that we can't hear in the studio, unfortunately, but uh, we do have a recording. It's called Inner and and outer strings. Now, uh, William Mayer, this is a work for string quartet and string orchestra. That's and correct. Is that what the title refers to in some way? Uh, it does. I was commissioned to do this uh, by um, uh, Howard Shannett, a, a conductor for, uh, I think his group was called the uh, String Revival. And it was quite a challenge to try to uh, get a, enough contrast between the solo strings, uh, the quartet, and then the outer strings. So I had a plan in which the outer strings really w were kind of represented the, uh, the universe, and there were other dead sounds that were very, very high, very low, and we, we had non-vibrato and, and what have you. And the, uh, the inner strings uh, were um, uh, to represent uh, the, you might say, the pulse or the warmth of life. 
Uh, and uh, this is partly true of the piece, but then uh, the best music uh, uh, sometimes completely abandons uh, a, a format, and that's what happened later on. It sounded wonderful in terms of program notes, but I think the, <laughs> the piece is possibly better than the program notes. <laughs> well, let's hear the piece, and let, let's hear it speak for itself. Please Inner do. and Outer Strings, music by William Mayer, Gerard Schwartz conducting members of the Seattle Symphony.
Inner and Outer Strings, music by William Mayer. Gerard Schwartz directing members of the Seattle Symphony in that performance. That's from a CD on the Albany label that came out in 1982. It's all music of William Mayer, the CD called Voices from Lost Realms. And in fact, we'll be hearing some more music from that very same CD a little bit later on today's edition of Around New York. William Mayer, our guest on today's edition of the program. He's just turned 70 this year, and Greenwich House Arts will be honoring him with a concert Thursday, the 14th, at Weill Hall, Weill Recital Hall at Carnegie Hall. Robert Sherman will be hosting the event, uh, and lots of great folks uh, will be there. Stephen Mayer, uh, William Sun, will be there performing with Peter Cazares. Uh, Christine Schotterberg, the fine soprano, will be there, a group called Dinosaur Annex from Boston. Uh, and William Mayer, in fact, there will be a, a premiere of a new work of yours? Uh, yes, it was something I wrote this summer in, uh, in Vermont called Distant Playing Fields. Uh, and uh, as, as I think about my music, for some reason, uh, th- there seems to be very often a great sense of distance. Uh, I think that uh, you probably heard that uh, in the, uh, uh, the inner and outer strings, uh, a kind of distance and remoteness. Why? I, I would have to be analyzed, which I have, <laughs> I have been, but as a matter of fact, but I still don't know what the answer is. <laughs> and, and also Thursday night, there's, uh, even though it's, it's a tribute to you, there's going to be some non-William Mayer that's, that's performed. Well, I'm, I'm particularly delighted that Robert de Cormier, with his de Cormier singers, is, uh, they'll be performing. And uh, uh, for Robert de Cormier's 70th birthday, I did a work that's going to be done called A Fond Kiss, and he reciprocated and uh, uh, set three poems of Mark Van Doren called Sing a New Song. So uh, th- this is a, a, a certainly a, a great honor for me. So it's sort of a mutual admiration society between uh, you and DeCormier going, going, <laughs> yes. going at the concert on Thursday <laughs> oh, night. Oh, hopefully the club's a little bit bigger <laughs> than that. <laughs> Our guest is composer William Mayer, and we'll be back to hear a good deal more of his music and have some more conversation as well when Around New York continues in just a moment. Hi, I'm Isaiah Shepard, the host of Selected Shorts, a celebration of the short story. Join me for the best in new and classic short fiction read by some of the finest American actors every Sunday at 1 p.m. on WNYC FM 93.9 and at 6 p.m. on Sunday on WNYC AM 820. Selected Shorts. This is Around New York on WNYC FM. I'm Fred Child. Stay tuned. A little bit later on today's program, we'll be joined by David Liebman, a fine saxophonist and pianist and composer. David Liebman, a little bit later on today's edition of Around New York. At the moment, our guest is composer William Mayer. Thank you. 
The Yankee Doodle Fanfare was written for the bicentennial year, 1976, so lots of American themes in there, not just Yankee Doodle. Uh, and that performance is by the Boom, Boom Wind Quintet, uh, a, a recent recording that they used to open a CD called Jam Session, uh, American Wind Music, performed by the Boom Wind Quintet. William Mayer, our guest on today's edition of Around New York. And... Uh, some very contrasting feelings, uh, William Mayer, in your music. Critics often write about its its levity and, and humor and wit, uh, but the piece that we heard a little bit earlier, Inner and Outer Strings, has that, but also <clears throat> has a very different side to it, a reflective side and and uh, a very plaintive feeling. Yes. Uh, there's a recent article uh, written about me which uh, uh, claims that... Uh, uh, some of my more humorous works are kind of protective coloration, uh, and that perhaps my real personality is possibly a little bit uh, uh, not morose, but uh, uh, sad and uh, poignant. Or well, whatever. well, here comes the analysis that we were talking about <laughs> earlier, I guess. <laughs> but uh, uh, the, uh, certainly a death in the family attracted me because I had, uh, uh, had lost uh, both parents at uh, an early age. And I think that was one of the reasons. But uh, we, we had been talking about a, a wonderful quote of uh, Eugene O'Neill, in which he says, there is no, no laughter without tears and no tears without laughter. So that, in a sense, I, I, I feel a, a humor and poignance are really complementary. Uh, they they uh, both, <laughs> both work together. And then they need each other, in a way. I, 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 th- I think so. I, th- I think so. And... Uh, I, I feel very uh, uh, good about the fact that uh, uh, these days I think composers can be more direct in their motion uh, and uh, uh, don't feel they have to retreat uh, if, if they're writing music that is uh, uh, accessible and lyrical and what have you. Uh, I think we've, we've passed that age. There's been some wonderful music that's been atonal too. But I, th- I think uh, these days people will judge a work uh, uh, in terms of its freshness rather than in terms of its acceptable style, which is, which is a great relief, William, certainly for my music. <laughs> <laughs> William Mayer, our guest on today's edition of Around New York. And, and if I could, I'd love to ask you about uh, some of your pieces that, that I've read about, yes. which, which, I've, which I've not heard but have very interesting titles. Um, well, <clears throat> uh, there's there's a piece called Back Talk for <clears throat> fifteen players an animated page turner. Well, there's a piece that's hardly ever done, <laughs> 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 and uh, the, the uh, page turner has it, it uh, has a very dramatic role, and uh, it, it's it's partly one of those performance pieces in in, in which uh, uh, the uh, the drummer uh, gets set to and make a tremendous noise in the bass drum and com- and completely misses. I mean, it's really, <laughs> it, it's it's a, a bit on the slapstick side, and and, and uh, uh, but I'm glad you reminded me of that because. Uh, Try to get some performances of that. <laughs> now, uh, uh, h- how about this one, which which sounds like it's very different? A piece called "Letters Home" for chorus and orchestra, based on actual uh, letters written from uh, Vietnam soldiers. Yes, sir, that had a very uh, interesting uh, history. Uh, there was a, a, a concert given in Carnegie Hall, I believe, in 1968. Um, in which Aaron Copeland and Ellie Sigmeister and many of us who were against the Vietnam War uh, participated. And this, this work was a, a setting of real letters written not only by our own GIs, but two letters from the North Vietnamese side. And um, as a matter of fact, Martin Book's band uh, was, uh, was, the, uh, was the narrator. And at that time, uh, any criticism of the war uh, was considered by some is very unpatriotic, and the work almost didn't get on. Uh, go on. The uh, the, the chorus uh, uh, objected very. I mean, some of the chorus objected. Fellow was not patriotic, uh, and what what have you. And our conductor Hugh Ross convinced them that this was a uh, should be seen as a work of art, not and not as a political message. And so, of course, now I I suppose we're all vindicated. But it was very. Uh, it was a very different era then. And uh, just the year before, 1968, there was a piece called Two News Items uh, for, for soprano and, and six instruments. Was, was that well, actually that, based on, on news well, items? Well, that was really a send-up, really. It was a, a takeoff uh, on a group that tries to be very, very avant-garde and sounds like Webern. Uh, uh, I, th- I think that one of the first titles was Contemporary Music Group uh, Reveals Origins, but it really is a Salvation Army group. And so they're, doing, <laughs> they're tr- trying very, very hard to be a, a Webern-esque, uh, you know, for the composer Webern, and, but they keep uh, falling back uh, on pop- 
popular tunes in Salvation Army uh, 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 material. Well, that, that's interesting hearing that you've written a piece like that Af- after hearing you talk about uh, uh, what what sounds like in 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 your description almost like the tyranny of tonal of atonality mm-hmm. rather, and the sort of the tyranny of the the intellectual rigor of atonality and yes. and uh, I mean you, you have a, a musical reaction. Well, to that I suppose too. I suppose it was secretly hostile, <laughs> <laughs> but as a matter of fact, the piano sonata, which is recorded by William Macellos, uh, is a work. It's a twelve tone work, uh, but I think it's possibly still more tonal th- than than not. But I, I'm sure that that there was a, a, a you know behind humor there very often is a. a, a a pointed barb, and I, I suspect that that was true there. <laughs> Composer William Mayer, our guest on today's edition of Around New York. Stephen Mayer, his son, is is also here with us today. And Stephen, I'd like to to ask you what it was like growing up in the Mayer household, which it sounds like with several artists and musicians, and and just listening to the two of you banter, it it sounds like a lively a lively place to grow up. Is it was that the, was that the way it was? It was a lively place. Um, as much. Aside from the music, because we were all such verbal people, and um, we did express ourselves, still do, as you can see from my, my dad's uh, commentary today. And um, we had five pianos. That was a good start. Five pianos. Yeah, in the at house. some point we had five <laughs> pianos, and um, lots of complaints about noise. Uh, my father was sort of locked up there on the, the third floor. He didn't get hurt too much, and there was a soundproofing around the door. But uh, I had complaints from uh, my sister below, and, and she used to threaten to put itching powder oh, on the not keys. A, not and... only uh, complaints from outside the house, but com- oh, complaints oh, um, from inside we the weren't, house. The house wasn't anywhere near anybody else's house, so we didn't have any complaints <laughs> from the neighbors. <laughs> uh, not that I know of. I mean, maybe they were just discreet. But, <laughs> but uh, no, there were complaints from inside the house. And um, we were sort of, uh, remember that book called Peterkin Papers? Yes. You know, this, uh, all about a, a sort of disorganized artistic family. You know, I used to get a kick out of this book and wonder why, and years later I thought, well, of course, uh, this is a little bit like our family. You know, everybody's doing their own thing and having a good time and um, talking a lot and not necessarily listening much. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the males in the family. <laughs> well, Stephen Mayer will uh, manage to survive all of that and did grow up and uh, will be taking part in Thursday's concert uh, honoring his father, William Mayer. It's happening Thursday night at 8 o'clock at Weill Recital Hall. For more information, 212-247-7800. Uh, Peter and, or rather, Stephen Mayer and Peter Cazares and Christine Schotterberg and Dinosaur Annex and the De Cormier Singers and many other folks taking part in that concert Thursday night, the 14th, at Weill Recital Hall. And uh, let's hear a little bit more piano music. We've got Shahan here, and let's let's put him to work again. Um, we've, we've got uh, another of William's pieces this one is called The Stream That Knew Sadness. So I guess this is back to the uh, poignant and reflective side of, of William Mayer's music. I would say so, music. Yes. The Stream That Knew Sadness, music of William Mayer, live performance by Shahan Arzruni.
The Stream That Knew Sadness, music by William Mayer, live performance on Around New York by Shahan Arzruni. And on today, today's edition of Around New York, we're joined by the composer William Mayer, his son, the pianist Stephen Mayer, and also pianist Shahan Arzruni. And uh, Shahan, this, this actually reminds, this piece actually reminds me in some ways of uh, works of uh, another composer who you frequently perform, Alan Hovhaness. Uh, yes. very, very simple and direct musical language that sort of just goes right to the heart. And oh, I wonder yeah, if that yeah. comparison rings true for you at all. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Actually not. <laughs> Actually not. No. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> no, this is much more uh, Western in concept, I think, and Alan is... Alan Havanas often Eastern, draws yeah. on, on uh, Indian and Armenian Yes, but, modes, uh, so. you know, I, I think the approach is very different. I think uh, this is um, full of emotion, and it goes to the core, and Alan is much more distant, I mm. think, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. Well, Shahan Arzruni performing music of William Mayer for us on today's edition of Around New York, and William Mayer is here himself, having just turned 70. Now, I'm, I'm hearing people uh, complaining about turning 30, turning 40, turning 50. Tell, tell me about how, how you feel about reaching your 70th birthday. Well, I probably won't recover until I'm 80. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I suppose we all go through life thinking I should feel older than I am. I suppose it, it never stops, really. And uh, I suppose if, if you, one just walks around the corner at, uh, at the age of 90, everyone thinks it's, a, it's quite an achievement. <laughs> and the nice thing, is, it, you know, when you get older, you can be a little more freewheeling. You know, you know, I mean, what's the point of not being yourself? <laughs> Which is nice. Uh, I had a birthday piece written for me by a fellow composer called Martian, Marshall Bielowski, and he did get mixed up. It was titled Four Score and Ten. And, uh, <laughs> and, he, and, and, and he was very apologetic. But I said it's one of the few mistakes that if you wait long enough, it won't be a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Wait another score, and it'll be <laughs> yeah. exactly right. Well, and and it's sort of uh, we were talking before we be be began the program today about how uh, uh, we we use these occasions to, to to mark events in our lives. In some ways, it's kind of arbitrary. Yes. Uh, to 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 mark uh, you know these these birthdays every ten years as, as yes. particular events. Yes. But it does. I mean, for for composers, mm -hmm. it gives us a chance to to celebrate music. I mean, well, we, we yes. Well, go, go ahead. Well, I was going to say that. I mean, I think composers in this aspect are are lucky because I mean, most people hide uh, uh, this kind of birthday and and what what have you. But uh, you do get uh, an awful lot of attention in performances. And I was just uh, reflecting on it. It seems to me that there is a great need, uh, even uh, in America, for, for kind of a ritual. And, uh, you know, and I, I suppose that some of the more organized rituals have, have lost some of their, their power, uh, that we, you know, birthdays and, and, and cere ceremonies and so forth. There's something about the, 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 uh, the human race that, that it seems to need a, a certain amount of ceremony or ritual. Um, but, uh, I mean, after all, this music is going to be as good or bad as when I'm 71, <laughs> uh, what have you. And well, uh, I know my uh, uh, wife, Meredith, and I were coming back from a Woody Allen picture, and we were th thinking of various composers and what they might want for their 70th birthday. And we were talking about Rossini, who was a wonderful cook. And we decided that uh, for him, uh, being a, a, a food critic of the New York Times would be a <laughs> complete delight. Give him his own column. Yes, the, yes. Uh, I should mention that uh, Shahan Azruni is a wonderful cook in addition to being a wonderful pianist. <laughs> yeah, well, Shahan, a multi-talented guy. <laughs> yes, I mean, he's, he's hosted programs here on yes. WNYC, yeah. and a fine yeah. pianist, yeah. and a fine yeah. cook, and just yeah. about anything else yeah. you can name, yeah. Sean yeah. Arsruni's really good at. And I was going to say about uh, a work I, I believe will end with, uh, Band and Bells, that uh, uh, I just, there's just n no pianist for this particular work that I'd rather have than my son, uh, not because he's my son, because it, it, there's a, a special poetic quality uh, I, I think he has that, uh, you know, and, and uh, I'm so glad because it's always embarrassing when you're close to people and you really don't like what they're, <laughs> <laughs> they're playing. And the wonderful thing is that uh, to have a son that, uh, that, that you really just, you know, that you would love just as much as a pianist, even if he's you not You honestly related. admire yes, as a musician. Yes, really do. Yeah. So well, it's well, a, very special feeling. Well, Stephen Mayer, we're actually, we're just about to hear uh, your your recording of, well, of Abandoned Bills. <laughs> 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 after having heard your father talk about it. And uh, actually... What, I, what, what's going to happen after this eulogy? I mean, it's... <laughs> <laughs> can't live well, up to it. It's the truth. Uh, abandoned Bills. Stephen, uh, tell, me, tell me about what the title of the piece refers to. Uh, well, I've sort of made up a story for myself, but I'm not sure it's the same. I've never heard. Of. But what story did you make oh, up? We've been on the air talk about this. Yes, but, um, well, I have amnesia. Bells, age. bells ringing all by themselves. 
abandoned, sort of just. Yes. I mean, it's it's. Uh, I sort of imagine these bells. Um, I don't know where they are. Um, somewhere, uh, ringing away, kind of a little bit um, lonely, a little bit sad. Um, in other words, sort of attributing human emotions to these bells. Um, maybe not really being heard. And um, it's sort of, I don't know if you've ever been captivated by the idea of something going on after or away from where people could ever perceive it. You know, like a tree falling in the forest doesn't make a sound, mm -hmm. that kind of a thing. You know, these bells just kind of going out there. And um, all the different bell sounds in the piece, and there are lots of different ones, could be these bells, but particularly the very um, sad, um, poignant ones towards the end, which, you know... Um, build up to a climax and then sort of die away and you hear just little bits of, of you know, the way at the end, after a big clash, you hear tiny after clashes of bells. Um, I, I, I can't uh, <laughs> add anything to that description except to say that uh, generally the composers, of course, have always loved bell sounds. I mean, it's just uh, I can't think of a composer that hasn't been captivated and uh, I'm no, no, no exception. Well, let's hear William Mayer's uh, Abandoned Bells. We, we'll have time to hear the first several minutes, at least, uh, of the piece Abandoned Bells. Music by William Mayer, and this recording is by his son, Stephen Mayer. Oh, could I say one oh, final thing? Sure. To say that it is dedicated to a, a dear friend of all of ours here at the studio, William Macellos, uh, who was such a wonderful pianist, and was just delighted to hear Stephen's recording of it. Yeah. Abandoned Bells, music by William Mayer.
and I'm sorry that we have to abandon those abandoned bells before we get to the to the end and the, and the climax that, that Stephen Mayer told us about. The piece is Abandoned Bells. It's music by William Mayer, a recording by Stephen Mayer on a recent Albany CD, which is entitled Voices from Lost Realms, music of William Mayer. Uh, a wide variety of music, in fact, on this CD. Some excerpts from A Death in the Family, his 1983 opera, uh, first Song, Three Madrigals, Abandoned Bells, Alleluia, Inner and Outer Strings that we heard earlier. Uh, a lot of different music from William Mayer on this CD, Voices from Lost Realms on the Albany label. William Mayer, who's celebrating his 70th birthday this year. It just came around on the 18th of November. And there'll be another party on the 14th of this month, Thursday next week, at Weill Recital Hall at Carnegie Hall as Greenwich House Arts honors William Mayer. Uh, Stephen will be there. Peter Cazares will be there. The De Cormier singers, Christine Schotterberg, a group called Dinosaur Annex from Boston, and lots of other folks as well. Robert Sherman will be hosting the evening, 8 o'clock Thursday night at Greenwich House, at, or excuse me, at Weill Hall, Greenwich House Arts, honoring William Mayer. And what did you do for your, uh, actually, on, uh, on the day of your birthday, on the 18th last month, what did you do to celebrate? Well, I went out to supper with my youngest daughter and uh, came back to hear um, uh, a competitor, I'm sorry to say, WQXR, <laughs> that did uh, one hour's worth of, of my music. But there was, there was nothing live. <laughs> and we didn't have Shahan uh, Azuni and Stephen Mayer there either. <laughs> so, but I was very delighted. Just, uh, uh, yes. So that there, there are certain compensations to uh, turning into a dinosaur. <laughs> well, William Mayer, really a pleasure to meet you, and thanks very much for joining us today on Around New York. It's been great fun. It really has. And Stephen Mayer, thank you as well. And Shahan Arzuni, always nice to see you. Thanks thank for you. being here. You're listening to Around New York on WNYC-FM.